Godzilla, a creature of unimaginable power, a creation of man's ignorance of the power of nuclear energy. Yet how can we understand a creature that does not fit our world of cellular based organisms that need specific factors to survive and thrive? Godzilla is an anomaly among the many other giant monsters that also exist and at times battle with him. To understand Godzilla in this case, we must search for answers on how his nuclear breath became and is such a devastating weapon. To do this, we must travel to his reality, to an alternate universe where giant monsters exist and plague mankind. One of the most remarkable weapons, and only specific to Godzilla, is his nuclear breath, and yet, how can we understand how a creature like Godzilla is able to develop such a weapon which is inherently part of his physiology. How do we understand a monster that defies all reasoning of what we know in our reality should not be possible and yet in Godzilla's parallel universe, the creature has and can use his nuclear breath as easy as breathing is to us. He is even able to control its power and at times, because of his nuclear mutation, the color of his nuclear breath has even changed to different tones and intensities. His breath has even shown explosive properties at times, which have even reached as far away as the outer atmosphere of Earth into space. Before we can understand how Godzilla's nuclear breath may work, we need to find what exactly are Godzilla's cells made of, and we already know about his regenerated G1 cells which make Godzilla basically indestructible because of the high rate of healing and regeneration they cause physically. Even with his super healing abilities, Godzilla's physiology cannot just be as simple as being able to heal at an unimaginable rate. His body must be made of highly specific organic materials unique to his physiology to be able to house such a destructive weapon like his nuclear breath. With this, we must look at hypothetical and applied science based in part on our reality and translating it to Godzilla's alternate reality. In this hypothetical theory, we search for materials that could be translated to Godzilla's mutated physiology and what we found in our scientific reality is a material which in his alternate reality could have become fused by his mutation caused by radiation to his cellular structure and are made of what would be types of organic super indestructible graphene based cells which are made even stronger by Godzilla's unusual super healing and regenerative abilities. You may be asking yourself what exactly is graphene? Graphene is made of a single layer of carbon atoms which are grouped together in patterns of hexagons. Graphene is one million times thinner than paper and it's so thin, scientists actually consider it two-dimensional. Carbon is known as an incredibly versatile element. Depending how its atoms are arranged, it can produce hard diamonds or soft graphite. Graphene's flat honeycomb pattern grants it many unusual characteristics, and some scientists consider it the strongest material in the world. Columbia University mechanical engineering professor James Holmes once said it's so strong it would take an elephant balanced on a pencil to break through a sheet of graphene the thickness of saran wrap according to the university. These single layers of carbon atoms provide the foundation for other important materials. Graphite or pencil lead is formed when you stack graphene. Carbon nanotubes, which are another emerging material, are made of rolled graphene. These are used in bikes, tennis rackets, and even living tissue engineering. Now one very important characteristic of graphene, the material can also be flexible and can even be stretched, a factor that makes the material a possible candidate for Godzilla's cell structure and based on the science of our reality, we know all living organisms are carbon based. Now that we found a mutated organic material that is part of Godzilla's entire physiology, Let's look at the mutated organic mechanism that houses and creates its nuclear breath. We already know Godzilla is a living nuclear power plant and is a highly radioactive creature. So to understand how his nuclear system works, we can take ideas from a nuclear power plant 
and translate the required parts to specialized organs which Godzilla had to develop because of his mutations. A nuclear power plant has systems and checks and balances to maintain and generate a constant amount of power. So in Godzilla's case, the power generated by his specialized organs is not only what gives him the radioactive nutrients he needs to survive, but also is the nuclear energy he uses in his nuclear breath. Let's look at how a nuclear power plant works and the parts that are vital for the nuclear process to happen and generate nuclear energy. Understanding nuclear fission is important and in the next short clip we will take a look at how a nuclear power plant works. We must keep in mind when we translate the process and parts of a nuclear reactor to Godzilla's organs, they are similar to the process of creating nuclear energy but differ in placement and location in his body based also on neurological factors which seem to point that Godzilla has to have a higher evolved brain and just does not rely on animalistic instincts as he has been portrayed at times. We have seen cognitive problem solving and other higher thinking abilities which make Godzilla an extraordinary creature to study. The short segment you're going to see next was created by e-learning on YouTube and shows an excellent way to understand the basic process and parts of a nuclear reactor using hydrogen atoms in this case. Nuclear reactor. In this video, we're going to learn about the nuclear reactor. Nuclear reactors are the modern day devices extensively used for power generation as the traditional fossil fuels like coal are at the breach of extinction. A nuclear reactor is the source of intense heat which is in turn used for generation of power in nuclear power stations. Its mechanism is similar to that of a furnace in a steam generator. The steam is used to drive the turbines of the electric generator system. A nuclear reactor consists of three crucial components, fuel elements, moderator, and control rods. Fuel elements come usually in the shape of thin rods of about 1 cm in diameter and contain fissionable nuclei like uranium-235 or uranium-238. These rods vary in number according to the size of the reactor. In large power reactors, thousands of fuel elements are placed close to each other. This region where these fuel elements are placed is called the reactor core. These fuel elements are normally immersed in water, which acts as a moderator. The objective of a moderator is to slow down the energy neutrons in nuclear reactor, which are produced during the nuclear fission process by the fuel elements. Thermal neutrons, which are the neutrons with energy of about 0.04 electron volts, are capable of producing fission reaction with uranium-235. During the fission reaction process, new neutrons are given out, which have energies of about 1 MeV. This is 1 mega electron volts. These neutrons typically escape from participating in another fission process as they are accompanied by enormous energy release. In fact, the probability of these neutrons produce another fission reaction is 500 times less than that compared to a thermal neutron. This is where a moderator is extremely useful. Moderators have the capability to slow down, or in other words, moderate, the speeds of these high energy neutrons so that they can in turn be used for a chain reaction to trigger multiple fission reactions of other uranium-235 nuclei. Commonly, ordinary or heavy water is used as a moderator in nuclear reactors because of the deuterons present in them which are capable of slowing down the neutron speed. Water molecules in the moderator are useful in slowing down the high-energy neutrons, which leave the fuel element after nuclear fission. These high-energy neutrons collide with water molecules, thereby losing out on some energy with every collision and therefore slowing down substantially. A new fission reaction can now be triggered using this slow neutron by striking it with the fuel element. The third and most prominent part of a nuclear reactor are the control rods. In order to get a steady output of energy from the nuclear reactor, every single fission reaction should trigger another fission reaction and ensure the availability of spare neutrons released to trigger the chain reactions. 
By controlling the number of spare neutrons available at any given time, the rate of nuclear fission chain reactions can be controlled. This control on the fission reaction can be maintained using control rods. The main function of the control rods is to absorb any excess or spare neutron in the moderator in order to prevent any further fission reactions. Usually, such control rods are made of boron or cadmium. To increase the rate of fission reactions, these rods can be removed from the moderator. A steady output of energy can thus be maintained by inserting or removing the control rods in the nuclear reactor. Now that we know the components of a nuclear reactor, let's understand the working of a nuclear reactor. It's usually enclosed in a shield made of thick concrete walls. It consists of a reactor core, pump, and heat exchanger. The reactor core and pump are placed in contact with the water, which is usually the heat exchanger in these reactors. Due to the enormous amount of heat released during the fusion reaction, the surrounding water gets heated up and changes to steam, which is in turn used to turn the turbines. So huge heat energy gets converted into electrical energy. Water is continuously flown in and out of the nuclear reactor using the pump. So, a nuclear reactor successfully generates nuclear energy from fission reactors. Now that we have a practical understanding of the process and the parts that make up a nuclear reactor, we can now begin to translate this process to the highly specialized mutated organs that house Godzilla's devastating weapon in part two of Universe G's, the hypothetical science of Godzilla's nuclear breath. In part two of Universe G's look into Godzilla's nuclear breath, we will use what we learn from the parts of a nuclear reactor and apply them to Godzilla's physiology. We will also take a look at other factors that are vital to the effectiveness of Godzilla's nuclear breath.